And welcome back everyone, Ellington here, and we are back on a game that we have not seen for a while on this channel. We have got Thrones of Britannia, a very fun, compact game, that's the best way I could put it. It is a fun game, it is a limited the game, that's why we don't see a whole lot of it. Um, but I do think that it is a little underrated. I think it looks very good. It performs pretty well. Uh, hold on, we do have some cavalry coming out here. We are on the settlement of Edin Edinburgh. Uh, we have cavalry coming out. We got looks like skirmishy skirmisher cavalry. Now, let, go and get and get in into the players and the factions. This is the faction Brega being commanded by Dave the Vassal, one of the defenders here. You can see we the attackers have some units here as well. We've got some Earl Th Earl's Thanes, um, Royal Thanes, and there were some Kern Heavy Axemen. All right. Now for the other defenders, really quick, you can see this massive settlement here. We have got, I believe, this is Mirs being commanded by Posguin. And then finally we have Gwynedd being commanded by Billy Blazes. Now, as the attackers, I believe this is Jorvik being commanded by Mexi. Um, let's see who else we got here. I don't know the the flags near as well as I probably should. Um, this is West Sachs being commanded by Tidiron. I'm almost positive that's West Sachs right there. And then I'm pretty sure that this is mid, but I could be mixing these two up right here. But you can see the attack is basically fully taking a place on this lower section of wall right here. You can see it leads into kind of this open area and then to a just ma a tiny, look at this choke point here. Like this is just, could you imagine trying to attack up this hill? No thank you, I'm not down for it. On the other side, the cavalry still just kind of being a nuisance. Doesn't even look like they really have any kills yet. Um, but you know, they're, they're not really going to go charging into these or these Earl's Thanes, right? So, probably not too big of a problem there. Got some Royal Arches shifting over to the right here. As the towers you can see, we got trained Fjerd Axemen coming up on their towers. I believe they're just an axe and shield unit. We typically play with limits on things like berserkers or double, uh, double-handed axes, because they are very, 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 very good. You can see it's coming off. It's just a lot of the the sword infantry first. Like I said, it's a gorgeous game. It is just a really pretty, well-made looking. It performs well. Once again, the biggest problem with Thrones of Britannia was never its performance or its visuals. It was its limitations, which was you're basically fully limited to the Isle of, of Britain and I think Ireland. And it just was very limited you couldn't do a whole lot it really in my opinion needed some sort of expansion you know maybe a dlc to open up frankia or, or you know back to scandinavia something it needed something to just broaden the scope of the game i love the red here of Gwynedd versus the more just like colorless almost look here Eric Heavy Warriors. I apologize if I do mispronounce them, because I probably will. Especially with like the Welsh, man. They've got some weird names. I love the burning in the, bra in the, in the background. The burning in the background, which does have an effect. It usually, so you can see up here, um, it tends to start see that one percent settlement damage it'll start having effects on things like morale and i believe it affects uh attack and damp or attack and defense as well too 
You know, I can see why they put troops over here. It is not uncommon for enemies to throw cavalry out. Um, unfortunately, they were not really able to contain this cavalry. The cavalry has taken a loss, and but that's about it. This is his general out here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see the gen out there. Where did he go? I just saw, there he is. So we have one of the attacking generals here, uh, just kind of guarding the flank a little bit, as well as uh, general's bodyguard, or royal bodyguard, excuse me. I believe they are shifting their archers and their catapult more center due to the threat of the cavalry. They want they they don't want to lose their cap or their their catapults and archers, right? A big push happening. Look at this trained, feared axemen just laying into these Kern veterans. I believe Breg. I believe is an Irish faction. I believe that's what it means by the Kerns. I believe. Sorry, it's taking a drink there. We have some added he heavy warriors. Here's a big bonus. Look at this. Elite longbowmen set up on the wall. This massive cliff face overlooking, and they are shooting down at these trained feared axemen. Got 14 kills so far on them. The enemy's gates have been destroyed. Some royal archers kind of pull, they're kind of pulling back a little bit, but they have not pulled back all the way back to the to the uh, to the you know massive choke point there. Catapult is taking some shots now. Catapults in this game are insanely accurate, but they have very limited ammunition. Um, I don't think it shows me their ammo right now. So they have 12 ammo and they've used what probably two shots. Or maybe the 12 ammo is the two shots. I don't know. I still don't think... So we got three kills on one skirmisher cav, but <laughs> the cav so far really hasn't gotten very many kills. In this time frame, uh, cavalry was not exactly top-notch, you know what I mean? But look at these arid, arid heavy warriors with 119 kills and two chevrons. I don't know if those were chevroned originally. They might have been. Yeah, I think they might have been. But I think they've gained one chevron. But now they're getting flanked by... Or no, they have another unit flanking. And they're flanking these... Oh, it's just the same unit versus the same unit. Our general is under attack. General's under attack. Who's attacking? Who's under attack? It's a, oh, it's probably it's the royal bodyguard for West Sax. Catapult trying to take some shots against the cavalry. Cavalry dodging decently well there. Thirty-five kills on the arty. Here we go, veteran Hersir Axman, coming around the flank over here. Look at that! They broke right through this line. And they're going to flank around and kill these Andrea heavy, heavy Axemen. 151 kills on them now. 133 kills on these ones. These guys have 69. <laughs> Giggity. 91. About to get flanked right here. Kern veterans holding on against some trained feared Axemen. 137 kills on them. You can see units starting to pull back. This unit, 137 kills, th uh, two chevrons, and he's only lost seven men. And that's one of the attacking heavy. We do have the royal archers here. What do they got? 31, 25, 31, 24. I mean, uh, if you want to talk about consistency, that's about as consistent as you can get. Man, that Artie just, just does not want to hit. It's honestly one of the most misses I think I've seen on an artillery in this game. It is crazy accurate. Which is why we usually limit it to one uh, per attacker. And I think I don't think the I don't think we let the defenders bring an Artie. Got the archers on the outside, mailed archers getting some pretty good shots over here at the royal archers. For the defenders, or are they attacking the mailed swords? Which ones are they shooting at? 
The Royal Archers getting really good shots over here. They are getting straight into the shield wall, though. 137 out of 160. Lots of units coming in. Trained archers. There's the catapult again. He's got 36 kills. It's a good shot. Oh, that was a good shot. I think he kind of got a combination of the archers and the Teolu sword guard there. 53 kills now. Oh. That didn't seem to do a whole lot on that one. Not really sure how it didn't do much. Man, they shoot fast too. Holy crap. Here comes that cavalry again. These current riders have six kills. These ones four, and then the household horseman has not gotten any because he's just a normal melee cav. And I don't think that the defender here, I think this is Dave, I don't think he wants to risk getting his general in combat like that. Good move here, look at this, trained archers up on the wall so they can actually support the infantry, pushing back those current riders. Catapult now, 67 kills. They've just been ripping to shred these units right back here. Where's the Tealu warriors that were getting shot up earlier? They must have already pulled back. There it is. Or a guard, Tealu guard. Looks like their plan is they're going to put a militia feared spearmen kind of up in this gap here to just kind of hold for a minute. Could be their initial hold. See, bounce power is very heavily in the attacker's favor. We've got a 1,700 man count difference. Feared Axemen have 108 kills. They're still taking on these Eric heavy warriors who have a silver chevron and 355 kills. Oi, that is something else, man. Look at this Welsh swordsman, 128 kills. He's got three chevrons and he, 55 men left and he's going to get out. The attackers have respect for the, the hard fought, you know, you know, units here, 55 men left. They're going to let them get back to the, their own lines. Had to take a drink there for a minute. You can see a lot of losses here at the walls. Where are they? Where are they going? The hell? What? Oh my gosh. Look at this. They're shifting their entire army to the other side of the map. They looked at this and they said, you know what? Nah. And they just legit, you know, select all click over here. They have shifted their entire forces to this side of the map. They're going to walk up this hill instead and then attack these walls. Huh, which puts them very near the victory point. And the defenders are on the also on the extreme wrong side of the map. So they're going to have to rush over to this side to defend. Interesting. Okay. Let's think about this, okay? I get it. You know, this is a far more appetizing look here than this is. This is a daunting task. Nobody wants to attack this. It is not fun. It's a grind fest. It, it just is a nightmare, right? The key thing here is this is going to take time, right? Now they have to shift all of their troops over to the other side. They're also being harassed by cavalry at the same time. Though they are using some of their archers to help kind of zone them out, so they're doing a good job there. The general for the defenders here, this is, a, a, once again, I think this is Brega. Um, 
He is finally getting into some combat. He's got 37 kills. He's lost six men, seven men. The archers, once again, you know, kind of helping try to zone him out here. But in the end, like, it's just going to take them a minute to get over here. So the question then becomes is how much time is wasted, right? Do they waste too much time here? Um, and then, obviously, you know, can they pull off the attack, See, too? They flee before our might. I'm intrigued. I don't know exactly how this is going to go, but I'm intrigued. I want to see these decisions and how they how they play out, if you will. So it is going to take a minute for them to get over here. What I might do, well, they're still kind of getting harassed here. If I was them, I think, well, they can't take their gen back in over here either. Well, what they could do is they could bring, and I think that's what they are doing. I think they're bringing their militia spearmen here to recap the gate. So then maybe they can bring their general back into the settlement. Right now, the defend or the attackers don't seem very interested in letting them do that. They've got their archers here still doing a pretty good job, like I said, of just really zoning out this cavalry. If I was the defenders here, I think I would just be patient with them and just wait. Come cap the gate and then go in and get back up top. I think that what the usefulness of what you can do out here is probably spent by now. Household Horseman has actually taken some losses there. He's taken eight, eight casualties. Does this count to burning the settlement? Minus two supplies, minus one melee skill. I have a feeling it doesn't. Because it's outside. Now, for the minus two supplies, I believe that means like ammunition on your archers, I believe, goes down. I think it's an interesting mechanic. All right, so we've got the shield walls here. We've got 160 and 160. Macha spearmen. But these Earl's Thanes are probably going to rip right through them. Now, they're not really there to kill the Earl's Thanes. These are here to kill the Earl's Thanes. So you got the Royal Archers up here, 35, 39, 38, and 50 kills. And they are going to have a beautiful... Oh, God. Look at that shot, right into the back of the Earl's Thanes, which is a very good unit, but I think that Wes Sachs here is probably perfectly willing to take the losses here. Um, one, to waste the ammunition of the archers, and then they will grind through these, ar these spearmen as long as they stay alive. Oh, God. And obviously he has better units as well, like the Royal Huskarls. It, you know, he would rather that these Earl's Thanes took the hits than the Royal Huskarls did. And this is their... Is this their two-hander? Yeah, it is. So here comes their two-handers. I wonder... Their shields are on the back. So these two-handers, they have a shield on their back. I'm curious as to if that shield uh, gives them protection from behind. I'm very... see once again the Earl's Thanes are eaten through here 59 kills now this one here 42 kills and they're I believe are they focusing them now or is it a different god that's a lot of archer fire like we said earlier the spearmen come they take the gate and I assume we'll see the cavalry retreat within the settlement here soon Still a ton of units sitting here just kind of waiting. They're just guarding. See, March of Spearmen, 60 men left and 61 men left. Royal Huskarls went into the combat. Oh, God. Remember what I was asking about the shields on the back? It does not seem to give them any more protection against it. Oh, that, that was painful to watch. I'm of the opinion, if you're going to put the shield on the back, it should be effective. It should have an effect on their on their armor or other protection from being shot in the rear. 
I don't think it actually does. Just, you know, it could be just they took so much fire that maybe it didn't matter. But I'm of the opinion that that should give you some extra, you know, protection. We're going to get the Tilu General out here. I don't know what he was planning. They left a couple units over here. So you got the the militia feared spearmen holding um and he's gonna take back some of these spots that will kind of help kind of hopefully you know uh, get some morale and stuff back they are leaving the field. yeah see they get a a uh, battlefield wide bonus so if they take that back they should be able to get you know a little bit of a buff back but the destruction of settlement, 13%, still minus two and minus one. And once again, I don't believe this, well, maybe it is counting because it was 10% last time. So here come the towers shifting forward. Do they have their archers up here at all trying to, I mean, they're pretty outmatched in that elevation, but I was curious if they had anything trying to push back this ranged force the wood cans some more skirmishers I like this strat I, I think this is a really cool move uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody on attack shift their entire army like all three armies like this um i've definitely seen it like you know one maybe two but not all three difference of man count uh what are we 1500 men difference it was a little better than it was earlier earlier it was only it was a 1700 man difference we got royal huskarls still over here they have their two militia feared spearmen but other than that, I'm pretty sure everything is over here, and honestly, it doesn't look like too terribly much. Got the Welsh mailed swords. We've got the Royal Bodyguard. Erig heavy warriors. A couple units of those. A lot of archers. Royal guards. Look at them. Don't they look like champs? They are trying to burn the tower 50% or, yeah, 50% uh, fire damage. Basically, you get it to 100% fire damage, and then the actual damage starts ticking off. The actual damage takes far less time than getting the fire damage. Royal Arch is getting tore up. I don't know why I keep rolling my R for Royal, but it just, it just sounds cooler, okay? Royal Archers really taking a beating as they try to come up the the wa the way here. Attackers still have a lot left. You can see there, you know, one of the armies is kind of forming a bit of a the buffer here at the bottom of the destroyed. hill, just to assume just to keep the cavalry from being a nuisance, but it's an awful lot of troops. Catapult now has 80 kills, but I think he might be out of it. He might, looks like he has four shots left. He's holding on to it, it looks like. Seventy-five percent on the tower. The Royal Thanes look like they're maybe gonna drop on this wall. Who's breaking? Ah, these guys. Those darn royal archers kinda breaking. Fire back, Royal Archers! You have 30 kills! Their archers have got to be getting some pretty good kills here. 119, 70, 78, 43, 137, 123, 121, and then 110. So yeah, their archers are definitely getting some good kills. The cowards! The Royal Archers of West Sax. Honestly, I don't think he's even that concerned about it. 
you know, they have so much infantry that I think he's just like, you know, hey, we can afford to lose the archer fight here. Kern Raiders, 20 kills. Not sure that the cavalry ended up being the uh, really worth it. This is a huge cav bodyguard. 100 man bodyguard here. And it's a cav unit. Okay, we burned one, burned two, burned three. Now I assume we will see an attack soon. So they only have four towers at the uh, on this side. You gotta remember, most of their equipment was over the other side because I'm assuming this was a fully planned out thing. So they didn't put very many towers over here because they didn't want it to give away the fact that they were gonna come over here, which makes sense. I'm a little surprised. So it looks like they're putting primarily all four archers onto this area here. I'm a little surprised that they're not putting something to threaten the flank here, but, um, you know, the more they narrow down that attack, I think the more that the numbers is less impactful. You know, if this is the only place they attack, then the attacker, the defenders can focus all of their attention here. Maybe they're going to drop this guy over here. Which, you know, look how open this is. That might be, you know, might help broaden the, you know, perspective of this attack. Push them back. Our men run from the enemy. This is shameful. Are the Royal Archers out of ammo? Yeah, they are. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner here, see the ammunition, it says zero and it's a red. It means they're out of ammo. So see how these guys, it's 13 and part, part yellow, part red. Sorry, I just kind of stopped talking. <laughs> I didn't cut off, I'm just like, I started looking around and got distracted. So it looks like a lot of their archers are out of ammo now. Look at these royal archers, three chevrons with z uh, 143 kills. No chevron. Yeah, a lot of these. Like, look, dude, look at the chevrons these guys have gotten. Really, really well. But the question is, is, is it enough, right? They've got all the chevrons. They've got all the kills. But now they're out of ammo. And was it enough so you can see they did shift their attention three to the left one to the right which i think is probably the better call i might even maybe shift a little further left here you know what i mean just to kind of once again stretch that a little bit although if they land in kind of a three-part succession here they would be relatively well you supported by each other. There's so much infantry left, man. Is that 1,100 man difference? I'm honestly kind of surprised. The defenders have really whittled down quite a bit here. Right? Am I right? Yeah, 1,100 man. So they've gone from 1,700 man difference to 1,500 man difference to now 1100 man difference. So they've done a pretty good job at kind of whittling down the attackers. It just come is it enough? That's always the question, right? So we have brethren versus brethren here. We've got Eric Heavy Warriors versus Eric Heavy Warriors. Pretty fresh. Well, I don't know. He's got only 99 men. This guy's 104. <laughs> we were here first. Come on, man. Sherry, we're cousins, bro. Royal bodyguard ready to help out. We got the wood kerns up here. Now, they do have a little of ammo. They're, they're a skirmisher unit, so kind of a javy unit here. See a javy right to these kern heavy axemen? Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. They're fighting the capture of this of this uh, 
of the gatehouse here. And I believe, see, according to that, it says they lose, are losing. He's still not throwing, so I'm not sure what the plan is yet. Here we go with more units shifting. God, there's so much. Look at this. They're just they're just throwing them in. They have the manpower and they just want to overwhelm this. So you have the royal bodyguard for I think this is uh, Mirs for uh, this Posquin here, um, kind of leading the defense at the moment as they just literally are throwing units into this. They have the manpower, they have the numbers, and they want to force their way through. But the Royal Bodyguard is getting his his scalp tax here. 97, 99, 100. He is just ripping through these units. Now, I do not believe these are like their best units. So, you know, it's not like they're crazy, crazy, super good. He does have two chevrons though. We also have here the wood currents now shooting up into these guys. And I think we're about to get a drop here in a minute. As in the, the towers are gonna. Here's one, we got Royal Thanes coming down. I believe another unit of Royal Thanes, which are a tier three, very good sword unit. We got Royal Guards that are defending against them. And it looks like over here, are they going to lead off with their archers, kind of trying to hold this area? These wood currents still have a lot of ammo left. They still have nine. Look at this row of bodyguard, 227 kills. Everything that came up here just got obliterated. But I think this is the place that's really the concern, right? It's harder to hold. You know, this is a really tight, choky area, right? This is a very broad, open area that's going to be a lot harder to keep the, the attackers contained. So this could be a bit tough. Trained archers now shooting. Well, at first I thought they were shooting the Royal Bodyguard, but they're not. Royal Huskars. There's those wood currents again. 116 kills now. Damn. Royal Thanes, how they doing? They're doing all right. 127 out of 160. They're taking on the Tiulu Sword Guard, which I believe is their best sword unit for the um, for Gwynedd. If it's not their best, it's one of their best. Look at those helmets, I love them. Just getting some cinematic shots here. Royal Thanes, 107 kills. They're holding okay right now. Right now they are basically using their archers in mass to try and hold back this tower while they're using their better units to try and kind of eliminate these as quick as they possibly can so this right here is really more of just kind of a, a you know a bump in the road right it's a you know try and hold them as much as they can um, for as long as they can but in all reality um, they, they're probably not going to win this over here I think so we got the Royal Thanes here, 150. Oh man, they are just shredding. 151 men, they've got 182 kills. Good shots into the Eric Heavy Warriors. I believe that's the trained archers there. Wood Kern's trying to kind of respond to that. They only have five ammunition left though. 
18. Oh, man, they've got so much ammo. I don't know how they ended up with so much left. Cavalry's still out here. They could probably sneak around this uh, Hirsir Axeman, to be honest with you. And I honestly bet you they wouldn't notice. The flags are, or the banners are so small that I don't think they'd even see those units coming. This is the militia feared spearmen that came from all the way across the map. Looks like both units came back. We got, oh man, look at the difference. Only 600 men. Defenders really putting up a fight here. But that's really bad. And this might be the backbreaker. Royal Thanes are gold chevron now with 257 kills. Why are our Royal Guards not going in? Would be my next question. You know what I mean? I don't know why we're not going in to contain this. They kind of, okay, so they, they kind of did. We got the, well, I don't know, Royal Archers. You could probably send in your wood kerns. You know, they might be able to hold off a little while. But they need infantry over here really, really bad. Really late response here by the defenders, unfortunately. The problem is, is, you know, if you send the Royal Guards in here, you know, you still are exposed over here. The wood kerns are getting shots into the back of the veteran here, Seer Axeman. You can see the archers still taking shots. They're really not getting great kills, to be honest with you, but it's not bad. Royal Guards are in combat now. Um, the thing is, these Royal, Royal Thanes are still healthy, 347 kills. The veteran here, Sir Axemen, are healthy, 123 men left. Or, I mean, uh, 107, but now they're 96 men left, not killed, sorry. And they're gonna run over here and engage the wood kerns. The the ground that the defenders had gained is being lost. They were at 600 man difference, now they're at a 700 man difference. So they are losing a little bit of ground here. They need to be careful about it. This over here is realistic. It's it's very sketchy. As is this. Wood currents might be able to put a stop in for a little while. But the Welsh mailed swords are probably going to lose here to the Royal Thane. Well, no, the 35 men. But the Eric heavy warriors might be able to take them too. So Royal Thane's taking on the Eric heavy warriors. But being also shot in the back by the wood kerns. 174. Man, these wood kerns are honestly pretty solid. Royal Thanes, 392. Only 52 men left. Now they're, uh, what, a 300 man difference? No, even worse. Yeah, they're, they're having a lot of troubles right now. 700-man difference. This is shameful. I was looking backwards on the, at the numbers. And this is the general coming in. He's got 37 kills. They still have a lot of infantry out here that the attackers do. They're also shoving really hard into this, color, this corner got two units of the what are they the veteran here sir axman the one's an eric heavy warrior got the Taylor's sword guard holding it though and this is a pretty this is a pretty fresh unit right I'm trying to get a hold of it yeah 130 men left he's or and he's only got 26 kills see they 
flee before our might. Yarl's Elite Axeman. I think this is another two-handed axe unit. You might be able to sneak along the wall here and kind of move into this gap, maybe. Royal Huskarl's in combat, trying to... They're just trying to buy time, you know what I mean? They need the kills, they need the, the time here. But man, it is, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher as the minutes go. 800 man difference. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Ugh. And here we go, dropping on the corner of tower again. The Royal Bodyguard is pulling back a little bit. I think he's shifting around. They do have another Teolu Sword Guard, but he's got to go in combat. If, if they're going to do something, they got to go now. There you go. They're desperately holding this area. They now have the Militia Feared Spearmen and the Tulu Sword Guard holding this, and they're doing decently well. You have a Militia Feared Spearmen holding the center, which is keeping the gate under their command. 900 man count difference. The cavalry trying to get involved, but it's just, unfortunately has been very ineffective this game. Just looking around here, you. Man, I'm kind of surprised the Tulu Sword Guard is actually not performing near as well as I feel like they probably should be. And obviously the Militia Feared Spearmen aren't going to be like doing crazy super good either. Maybe this Tulu Sword Guard isn't as good as I thought it was. Galaglass is coming in. They're once again a, a two-handed sword, a, a two-handed axe infantry unit. So basically, like a shock unit, if you will. Did they dismount their cab, Jen? Yeah, they did. I'm not sure why. Yeah, they they absolutely uh, <laughs> dismounted it. The battle is turning in our I don't know if he did it on accident, maybe, or maybe just felt like uh, it's just not doing any good as a cavalry unit. They're 700 man, so they've gained a little bit of ground back. Probably due to the Royal Bodyguard 366. Once again, these wood currents have actually been doing pretty well. Charging in on this cab just to get rid of them. But I have a feeling that we're about to get a break here from the defenders. Whose gen just died? Probably this gen. Because this guy is pretty healthy still. 127 out of 240. And he's at 52 out of 100. So I guess he technically could be dead, but I, it doesn't seem like it. Six hundred man difference. Ah, uh, but look at this. Here's the Royal Oscarls. And they are fresh, fresh. I think this is this is it. Obviously, you see the time counting down. I don't think it's any chance that the attackers are going to break at this point, but uh, sure looks like the defenders are on their way out the door. Tilu, 95 kills, and he's actually still alive. I'm kind of surprised. He's actually performed relatively well on foot. Mailed Huskarls taking on the Royal Bodyguard. Now Royal Bodyguard's got a gold chevron, 545 kills. Woodkern still holding this kind of little flank over here. Though they're not really fighting. 
Oh, because everything's dead. And here we go, Royal Huskarls breaking the back now. And that is it. And it didn't give me the kills. Well, unfortunately, it did not give me the kills on that. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't give me the kill screen. But I guess that'll be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. The attackers pulling that one off. It was a close battle in the end. You know, only honestly, only like a 500-man count difference between the two teams at the end, which is pretty solid. You know, definitely means it wasn't a huge smash. I liked the tactics on the side, you know, shifting all the way over to the other side of the map instead of fighting up that Death Valley. You know, it was very interesting. But like I said, that will be it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and we will see you guys next time.